no screws. Okay, so here's the upper intake manifold that has to come off. You're gonna have to take off our throttle body. There's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold that on. You're gonna take off the snorkel to get access to the throttle body. Uh, you have a line here that needs to come off. Then you have these 10 millimeter bolts down here that hold the plenum on here. You have one here. Then you have Allen screws. I'll tell you what kind of Allen screw that is, uh, but they are on both sides. There are some down here. And uh, when we get there, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how to do that. Then we have these fuel lines over here. Right here, there's a fuel line and a couple bolts that we need to take off to get the plenum to come up and out. It's a good idea to change out the plenum gasket when you do this. Okay, got the plenum gasket here. There's three individual little O-rings. Then got the uh, Toyota spark plugs. Let's see, is there a part number on here? Iridiums. FK20HBR11. That looks like it'll be it. Okay, so right down here, there's a little plastic screw. Okay, it's right there. That little plastic screw you need to unscrew. And you have some body clips. Next we'll do is take this snorkel off. Go ahead and pull that out of the way. You don't need to disconnect any of this stuff. I'm just gonna take this snorkel out real quick. They are 10 millimeters. Loosen that up. Loosen this one up. Okay, there's one end. Then there's something holding it. Oh, there's a little clip, there's a little hose down there. So right here on the bottom, right down the bottom, there's a hose running through here. You gotta disengage the hose, get it out, and you can pull it up and out. So here's your passenger side, spark plugs, or coil packs, your spark plugs. Three 10 millimeter bolts hold this, hold these coils in. So you just take the coils off. I wanna get some compressed air, I'm gonna use my air compressor, blow out all these ridges down here. Because when you pull the spark plug, when you, call, when you pull the coil pack and you pull the spark plug, it's a straight shot down into your cylinder. You don't want any debris or dirt getting down in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and blow the top of this engine off just so I have you know a nice clean area to work with. Got my air gun. Okay, I blew it all out. I know some of you guys are gonna notice the throttle body's open. I'm probably gonna get some nasty comments down there. Oh, you're throwing dirt into the throttle body. Well, I'll clean that out on this side and on the back side as well before I put everything together. So don't you worry your pretty little heart about that one. Let's pull these four 10 millimeter bolts out. Okay, bought this new 3 8 electric ratchet off Amazon by Chemo. Gonna try it out on this car. One, two, three. They're all the same length. Okay, got that loose. Next thing we'll come down here. This looks like a 12 millimeter, 12 or 14. We're gonna take this, this part of the EVAP system. We have a hose going in here. We'll take that out. We'll take this bolt out. I should put this bolt back in to the intake so I don't lose it and then get this out of the way. I'm not gonna disconnect this. I'm not gonna disconnect the uh, wiring harness for the throttle body at all. This is a fly-by-wire system. And then I'll come over here, open up this uh, fuel line there's two crush washers on the fuel line, so whatever you do, don't lose those. Uh, typically, you can reuse them. If you want, go ahead and replace them. I would buy them from Toyota. If you're gonna replace them, get these nuts off and these Allen screws, and the intake should be ready to come out, and we will get access to the uh, driver's side spark plugs. Yep, 12 millimeter. Got my chemo. Pull that free and clear. I guess we'll have to take this off. Just squeeze in the wiring harness, laying it out over to the side. Okay, put this back so I know where it goes. This connection right here was super easy. Just pulled the hose right out. There was no clamps. This is a wiring harness for the throttle body. It connects, has two connections down here, part of the plenum. I'm gonna pop those loose from beneath, just squeeze them together. 
get them loose and free and clear so I can get the intake off. Have to get this hose free. That's pretty simple. Coolant hose going to the throttle body. You have two little clips that you have to squeeze together to get it up and out. Yep, see? So right there, you have these two little clips that need to be squeezed together at the same time. So just taking this hose out, give me a little bit more room. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Got that one free too. Okay, so I had the other one right here. Had to squeeze those. There's a little hose right here. Had to uh, take off to uh, get in there. But uh, just freeing this wiring harness up. Now we'll go over to the uh, fuel fuel line. Okay, coming back over to the driver's side of the motor. You have a fuel line right here that needs to come off to get the plenum free. And then down here, let's see, I need to get a flashlight for you guys. But there are, I think there's one 12 millimeter bolt down there. But let me grab a flashlight. Right underneath the banjo bolt. For the fuel line, there is a electro connector. So I'm gonna pop that off, pop the fuel line off. And then there's a hose down there. It looks like it's, can you guys see it? Mm. I know it's hard to see down here, but it'll make more sense when I pull it off. Um, it looks like it's part of the intake, probably part of the PCV valve system. PCV, yeah, PCV valve system. That needs to come off, or doesn't need to come off. It'll come off when I get the plenum up and out. I thought there was another bolt down here, but I'm not seeing it. So, but like I said, when you guys take off the fuel line, be careful. There's two crush washers between there, sandwiched in there. So don't lose them. Do not lose them. You get some fuel coming out of there. So get a rag. So I'm going to catch it. So here's what I was talking about. This is the banjo bolt. It has a hole through it for fuel. And on this side you have a little washer and the other side you have another little washer too do not install the banjo bolt without the washers or you're gonna have a fuel leak you're gonna have a fire and you're gonna burn to death okay that's my warning to you do not install the banjo bolt without these washers I got that off that's part of the brake vacuum that's part of the uh, vacuum braking system it goes to the brake booster it gets vacuum for the brake booster so that you have brakes Getting the uh, electrical connector off of that uh, right below the uh, right below the fuel connector. There was a little electrical connector I got off. Just squeeze it together and pull it off. Basically, what you're trying to do is get all the hoses, wiring harness, any extra stuff off the plenum, the upper intake manifold, so that you can just pull it up and out and get access to the driver's side coil packs and spark plugs. That's all you're trying to do here. I'm starting to work on the upper intake manifold. You have ten two 10 millimeter bolts here. The rest are these tiny little Allens. And the Allen size is five millimeter. All the tools that I use in this video, I'll put a link in the description below. I got it broken loose. I almost, I was about to say, I might have to get a, a five millimeter Allen uh, socket to get this out. There it is. I guess these are too long. These Allen keys are too long. Okay, got that one loose. Get this 10 millimeter right here. Don't drop those. I will start having to use a five millimeter on a three eighths socket. There's on some of these uh, Allen bolts, they're just too recessed to get a, uh, to get the key in there. The hex key so next one I'll be doing is right back here there's one over here okay looking at it again on top there's one right there right there it's on the very center I'm just trying to see there might be one right down there Yes, there is one down there. Way down there. I don't know if my I don't know if my socket will reach that. <clears throat> oh 
<laughs> nope. So I have to use the. Uh... It won't reach down there, so I need to use the Allen key. This little piece broke down there. Oh man. I was oh. down there trying to get that five millimeter bolt loose and my hex key snapped off. See right there? Should look like these. Just a weak point in the design snapped right off. You can see the little part right there. I'm gonna take this back to O'Reilly Auto Parts, get it warranted, but um, it wasn't stuck in there or anything. It just slides in nice and easy. So I was just able to get it out with a um, magnet little magnetic pickup tool had to go buy a uh, t-handled hex key set that's on its way from o'reilly's right now and then i'll get back to it and pull those last two bolts out got a t-handled allen key five millimeter make sure you guys have good tools when you use this these these uh allen bolts are recessed which make it difficult to get down there and you cannot get a uh, three eighths uh, socket down there with the allen key it just there's not enough room so just make sure you get a a good um make sure you get a good tool set before doing this. Okay, find the last one. Which is right here. Make sure it's all the way in. Oh man. <laughs> why does why does Lexus use these silly hex bolts? I can just use 10 millimeter. Make it a lot easier. Make it a lot easier. If anybody, any engineers from Toyota are listening, use 10 millimeter, dude. So once I get this out, the intake should come up nice and easily. If it doesn't, if you feel any kind of resistance, there's something. Um, there's a bolt left or a screw left that you forgot. Now, since the bolt is recessed down there so far, you might need to get a small pick magnetic pickup tool. There it is. Trying to get light and everything down here. So it's right, right below where my finger is at. You guys see that? That's a, it's either 10 or 12. So I'll try to get a wrench back there and break it free. It is a 12 millimeter back there. Getting out my long 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter ratcheting adjustable wrench. This wrench is awesome. Link down below. Okay, right down here. So. Driver's side still. There is a bolt underneath this wiring harness that you need to remove. So I disconnected it here. And then the bolt sits right down there. Right line, but right below the wiring harness. So looks like a 12 millimeter again. So I'll disconnect that. Let's see if I can get the uh, intake up and out. Had to get the bolt out of the back, which is a long mother sucker. And I'll get this one as well. You got that one out? All right, got that last bolt out. Intake manifold is ready to come out. So, like I said, this should come off nice and easily. You shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't have to force it. it should come out easy, easy. Like I said, everything should come out nice and easy. But I forgot a bolt, which is right there. Right where my finger's at, right there. It's on the side of the throttle body. Looks like a 10 millimeter. Pop that sucker out. Okay, got that one out. Then I have a hose back here. It's part of the PVC system. So right in the back, I had the PCV valve hose that's stuck on, and then there's a wiring harness that's stuck to the very, very back of the plenum. And you can't, you can't see that. I mean, I guess if I look back there, I could see it, but you can't see that until the plenum comes off. So it squeezes the other way. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so just had to squeeze it the right way. Here's a hose I was talking about. It's held in by finger tight clips right there. Then you have these O-rings. 
So it's always, always a good idea to replace these when you do the uh, spark plugs. All right? So you do collapse and they wear out over time. So while you're in there, might as well clean them up. Get new ones on there. I got the new gaskets from Felpro. I'll put links in the description below where you guys can get those. Okay, it's always a good idea. Those uh, holes in the intake go right down in the cylinder. So I'm going to put some stuff, some paper towels down in there, keep any debris from going down. And then I'm going to spray the top of the valve cover off again. So that when I take the spark plugs and the coils out, or the coils and the spark plugs out, nothing goes down in there. Clean this all up. Doesn't look bad at all. Let's get any residual oil or any contaminants off. Take some air, air this side off. Okay, and this is the easiest part of the whole thing. So you have coil packs here. I'm not gonna show you both sides. It's very easy if I show you how to do one, you can do the other. Take the plug wires off the coil packs, take the 10 millimeter bolts out, and then uh, pull the coil packs up and out. Okay, there you go. I right, took the bolt out, wiggle the coil pack back and forth a little bit, break that seal. At the same time I'm pulling up. There you go. Make sure that goes back onto the coil pack. We'll put some dielectric grease in here. Just go around and do that all for all of them. I'm not gonna show you the other side because the other side is exactly the same, or well, not exactly the same, but once you get this side, you can figure out how to do the other side. I'm just gonna coat on the gap for the spark plugs. It should be already measured in there because since the spark plugs are from Toyota, a 5.8 spark plug socket goes down in there. You pull each one out. I'm gonna coat the new spark plugs with uh, nickel-based uh, anaces and then uh, put it back into place. Got an extension, 5.8 spark plug socket. Righty tighty lefty loosey. That one's broken free. Okay, there it is, Denso Original OE Spark Plug, FK20HBR11. Let me give you this quick tip right now while we're working here. When you put the new, when you put the plenum back on, make sure you leave all the bolts and screws, or bol yeah, bolts and nuts, I should say. Make sure you leave them loose so that you can uh, get them all to line up. So you have the very back one right here, and um, just just finger, you know. Start it by hand, and then uh, start another one by hand. Start them all by hand. Don't tighten many of them down until you know you have everything um, in place and that they're all in the right spot, and then you can start torquing stuff down. Two things I'll be using. You have a dielectric silicone paste. I'm going to put into the coil packs, and then I'm going to use a nickel-based uh, anaces. This really helps with uh, different metals, be that iridium or uh, platinum, going into an aluminum head or a steel head. Just found this stuff works awesome. You could use a copper-based one. It just uh, makes more sense to use nickel, which uh, is more uh, conducive to different metals. I have the spark plug here, have the anti-seize. What I do, I'll start in the middle, just start coating it. You don't want to get any on the tip right here. You don't have to put tons of this stuff on, just a little bit light coating and you're good to go. Okay, next thing I like to do, I have a six inch 3 8 hose, just a rubber hose. I'll go ahead and guide this down into here. I hate dropping the spark plugs down in here. I see guys drop them down and they tighten them up. You could damage this tip right here. So that's that. this is why I do this. And I lead it down, right? And you can actually feel it when it grabs on the threads. Okay, it grabbed. And then I just run it down until it bottoms out and I go to the next one. That way I know I'm not getting, the, the tip's not getting damaged when I drop it down there. Is going this far into the car, you know, it's not the hardest thing, but it's not the easiest thing as well. So just take your time, do it right. Okay, that one's in. Now let me show you. Take my 5.8 spark plug socket down, guide that in there. It's locked in. Now you don't have to put a whole bunch of torque on this. You don't have to put a whole bunch of strength when you tighten these things down, okay? Let's see. Going the right way. Okay, so there it is. I can feel it bottomed out, right? There's a new crush washer on these spark plugs, so that has to collapse. So I'm going to show you. I'm right here at what? The 9 o'clock position. You can actually feel it after over time. So, not there yet. 
one o'clock, nine. Okay, it crushed. Maybe the 11. That's it, that's all you do. A little bit of that, put it into the coil pack, right there. Lead it down, and you're good to go. Put the bolt back on, snug it down, and you're done. So I only have five more remaining, but that's what you do. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with showing you every single one. But that. Okay, so I got this side all done, the passenger side. Just repeated the same process for all of them, so all the spark plugs are done. One thing I just wanted to share with you is that there's a wiring harness that goes right through here. It's held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. Had to move that, get that out of the way to get access to this 10 millimeter uh, nut for the coil pack, the one in the middle. Other than that, it was all easy, easy, not hard at all. This is very important. When you guys plug in the connector back for the coil pack, you gotta make sure that it clicks. You hear click, and then you gotta make sure, double check it by, you know, tugging back on the on the connector to make sure that's in place because you'll go if you don't get this correct you'll uh, put everything back together and fire up your engine and you'll have a misfire so don't let that happen so go ahead click it in give it a good pull back stand same here heard the click give it a pull back nothing staying on same with this one here click Pulling it back, nothing. I'm gonna double check that side too. Replace these seals, just gotta grab it, pull them out. You know, not too bad, but it's always a good idea to replace them. Okay, got the new ones here, Felpro. Open that sucker up, okay. New ones in place, or I should say, new ones in my hand. They can only go one way. Um, up and down doesn't matter, but it does have little these little nubs on it, little nipples. And you go ahead and put it down in. Just feed it down into place and then push it in. Don't drag your finger along it. Just pat it down. Okay, there's one. Repeat this process for all the remaining two. Okay, that one's in place. And then uh, right before I put everything back together, I'll double check these, make sure that they're good. So, but just take your time, put these back in. Don't stretch them out, just put them back into place. Okay. Okay, before I go any further, sorry for the low light. We're looking at the uh, throttle body, the back of the throttle body. It's a little dirty, so just put some uh, Brake cleaner on here, just clean it as well as I can. I know it's hard to see, but it's best to clean it now before you put the intake back on. So, see this butterfly valve back here? Now you can't see it back here, too too dark. But don't move it, there's a little motor in here, little actuators, little plastic gears that actually controls the butterfly valve. If you move that, this plate, you run the risk of damaging this. So when you clean this, don't move that plate. Do not move that. All right. Just be careful. Be careful. <laughs> Just be cautious. Take your time. Clean it out as best as you can without moving this plate. Okay. So everything's ready to go. Clean the throttle body, the front side and the back side, or the front side and the back side, I should say. Uh, cleaned all this off. This is all good to go. Going to pull the paper towels out now. Do not forget those. You don't want those getting sucked through your engine. Don't forget about this connector right here. It's actually just going to be, um, when I bring in the intake right now, it's just going to be plugged into the back of it. You don't have to squeeze it like I did to remove it. Everything's good here. All the O-rings are in place. And don't forget the hose right here for the PCV system. Okay, so this only goes one way. Bring this down into place. Plug in this connector. Okay, that's in. Line up the studs. 
Okay, one thing I want to do, I want to connect that connector back there in the hose. Okay, get that out of the way. Find the other connector here. Make sure that clicks into place. Okay, bring in my hose. Okay, that's in place. Okay, come back here. Bring this in. Okay, make sure it's seating, which it is. Okay, looks good. So, like I said, I'm gonna leave all these loose. I'm gonna start one. I'm actually gonna do the back side first. You have the two bolts that we took out. One goes in the very back, one goes right underneath here. The longer one goes right here. Okay, bring in the longer bolt. Move this wiring harness out of the way real quick. That's in place. Starting it by hand. Just want to make sure you have a few threads started. But leave them loose. Okay. Got that one. I'll go for the one in the back. Okay, got that one started. Do the one in the back of the throttle body. Right there. Okay, got that one started. Bring in the six Allens for the intake and then the two little 10 millimeter screws. To get the recessed ones, I'm just putting it onto a magnet pickup tool. It's gonna guide it down that way. Bring in my T-handled Allen key, five millimeter. Okay, that one's in place. Go back here, driving this nut. Okay, so got the back bolt done and then got the fuel line back in place. Do the back bolt first before you put the fuel line back into place because the fuel line covers up the back bolt. So next thing I'm going to do, go back to the fuel system, put in the connector, put in the banjo bolt, make sure both of the washers are there. And I'll come here and tighten that one down. Okay, put the connector in first. Connector is in. Bring in the fuel line, snug that down. 12 millimeter wrench. Okay. Now I'm gonna get this side bolt right here. Now I'll tighten down all the intake bolts. I'll stagger them when I do them. Okay, so my other camera got full of storage, so let me just show you guys real quick what to do. Um, just tightened all these down, intake bolts down. Uh, I gotta kind of tighten that one down. Next, we'll bring in the uh, four bolts for the throttle body. Uh, we'll connect, reconnect this hose to the snorkel. Um, double check all our connectors. Um, and then there's not much left to do after that. The hardest part was getting those intake bolts out. What a hassle, man. Broke my first tool, and then I had to go get a T-handle, uh, T-handle five millimeter Torx hex from uh, O'Reilly's. I'll put a link in the description below to that. But uh, there you go, guys. If you've come this far and you've gotten this much done, you guys can put everything else back together. Um, like I said, warning: do not move that throttle plate in the. Uh, do not move the butterfly valve in the throttle plate because there are little gears inside there that can get damaged. Um, after you get everything buttoned up. Just uh, start the vehicle, make sure you have no misfires, and you should be good to go. All right, guys, hope this has helped you out. Hope it's helped you save some money. And if you can, please subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.